Good day to all. Welcome to Practical Research 2. We are on week 4. And once again, I will be your teacher, Relly D. Castro. Before we start, let's read the general instructions for your module. You have to answer all the questions, drills, activities, and assessment on a separate sheet of paper, which will, sub will be submitted in the designated drop boxes. Uh, on your uh, assigned barangay, include your name, grade, and section, part of the module you're answering, date of submission, and complete answer for all the task events. Also, have your answer sheet signed by your parent. There is no need for you to copy the questions on the answer sheet. Just make sure that you follow the instructions properly and write your answers legibly. In doing this, follow the template and example below. Our topic for today are all about variables in research. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to differentiate kinds of variables and their uses. Now, before we start, we're going to be having uh, preliminary activities that you're going to be accomplishing. Do not forget to write your answers uh, on a separate sheet of paper and also read the directions carefully. So let's start with the first one. So the first one direction is Choose the letter of the best answer and write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. So this is just a simple multiple choice. So what you're going to be doing is you're just going to be answering the questions below and choose the letter of the best answer. Only write the letter of your answer. Okay, so once again, you can pause the video uh, as you accomplish the module and then... We can continue on after you're done. Now, for the next activity, the direction is write fact if the statement is correct and write bluff if otherwise. Write your answer before each number. So this is a simple uh, true or false. So you're just going to be writing the word fact if the statement is true and the word bluff if the statement is false. Write your answer on your answer sheet. Again, you can pause the video, and when you're done, we're going to be continuing. Now, for the third pre-activity, the directions is, before you proceed to your next lesson, let's refresh what you've learned from the previous lesson. Briefly describe the following kinds of research and give examples of topics that may be applicable to each. Now, for this activity, so it's a, like a review, so we've already talked about this before. So you are going to be describing the three types of quantitative research. So that will be through experimental, survey, and correlational. So give your brief description for each one and also give an applicable example of topic for each. So write your answer again on a separate sheet of paper. So pause this video. Uh, after you're done, we can continue. Now, let's proceed with our topic of discussion for today. So the topic that we're going to be talking, uh, talking about today are variables in research. So what are variables? So according to the definitions, variables are concept, qualities, or characteristics. So what do we mean by this? So it means that when we talk about variables, they are the characteristics or they are the concept or the qualities of the subject that you are doing your research on. So let's say, for example, you are doing a research about a group of students. So the variables are the concept of quality qualities of those students. It can be their age, your, their grade level, uh, even the place of their birth. So those are the things that we actually measure. Uh, Another definition is a variable specifically refers to characteristics or attributes of a sample or subject that can be measured or observed and that varies among different samples being studied. Again, what does it mean? It means that, again, uh, variables are the characteristics that we actually measure, characteristics or attribute of the subject 
that we are doing research on. And when we say variable, it varies among different samples being studied. For example, again, kamukha nung binigay kong example kanina, let's say you are doing a research about a group of students, so you are measuring their age, you are measuring their place of birth, you are measuring their academic performance, all of those are considered to be as your variables, and they, different, and, and they differ from one student to another. So student one can have a different grade from student two, student three, and student four. So yun yung tinatawag natin na variables. Okay, as I said before, variables uh, are concepts and attributes that we measure that can vary from one subject or one sample to another. So here's another good example. Let's say you are trying to measure uh, or observe birthplace. So you ask people about their birthplace. So some of the people that you ask may answer municipalities where they are born. Some will answer that they were born in San Miguel. Some will answer that they are born in San Ildefonso, San Rafael, Baliwag, uh, and so on and so forth. As you see, for one characteristics, there are variation within a class. As I've said before, uh, sample A will have a different variable measurement from sample A, uh, B or sample C. So it varies. Magkakaiba sila ng kasagot. Okay, now let's talk about the different types of variables. So variables are classified in several ways. One of the way to classify them is into, is into continuous or discrete. So pag sinabi natin continuous, it is measurable. At pag sinabi natin discrete, it is countable. So take a look at this. Uh, so variables, again, are classified into two. So you have discrete and continuous. Discrete is uh, classified into nominal and ordinal, and continuous is also classified into ratio and interval. So we are going to be talk, talking about them one by one. Okay, now let's talk about the first type of variable that will be continuous variables. So what are continuous variables? So continuous variables are variables that can take infinite number on the value that can occur within the population. So anong ibig sabihin nun? So ibig sabihin nun, infinite, walang katapusan. So, the value of a continuous variable has no ending. For example, uh, length. Okay? Ang length, walang katapusan yan. So, hindi yan nagtatapos sa 1 million inches, 2 million inches, 1 billion inches. So, there's no end to it. Wala siyang katapusan. Uh, another one is age. Age also doesn't have any uh, any any ending so it is infinite so one one million years one billion years one trillion years so there's no ending to it so kaya sinabi natin siyang continuous okay patuloy dire diretso walang katapusan okay another characteristic of a continuous variables is it have values that lie along an evenly dispersed range of numbers so what does it mean ano ibig sabihin yan so Take a look at this ruler. So, we use ruler to measure length, haba. Okay? So, in this case, uh, the unit of measurement that we are using for this particular type of ruler is in millimeters. Okay? So, millimeters. So, ang sabi natin, uh, ang sabi natin, uh, continuous variable uh, lie along an evenly dispersed uh, range of numbers. So, ibig sabihin nun, the difference between 1 mm and 2 mm is the same as the difference between 5 mm and 6 mm. So, ano ba kasi ang difference ng 1 mm and 2 mm? Hindi ba 1? What is also the difference between 5 mm and 6 mm? It's also 1. So, they are the same. So, it is evenly distributed. Hindi ibig sabihin na yung 1 mm and 2 mm is iba siya sa 5 mm and 6 mm when it comes to their difference. So, it is evenly dispersed. Okay? Uh, now, examples of your continuous variables are age, height, and temperature. So, they are a uh, uh, good example of continuous variables. Continuous variables can also be categorized into two. It can either be interval variables or ratio variables. 
So, pag-usapan natin yung interval and ratio variables. Okay, let's talk about interval variables. So, interval variables is a type of continuous variable. Therefore, uh, uh, like continuous variable, it also it have values that lie along an evenly dispersed range of numbers. So, in-explain ko na sa inyo ito kanina. So, ibalik lang natin. Ano? So, take a look at again. Uh, okay, take a look at this ruler. Okay, so the range of the ruler or the value in the ruler is evenly distributed. So, ibig sabihin nun, uh, the difference between 1 millimeter and 2 millimeters is the same as the difference between 7 millimeters and 8 millimeters. So, what's the difference? The difference is 1 millimeter. Okay, so interval variables, of course, uh, it, is also consider, uh, it is also a continuous variable. Okay, kaya ganun. Now, uh, uh, a major characteristic of your interval variable is it doesn't have a true zero. Um, ano ba ibig sabihin nun? Ano ibig sabihin nung tinatawag natin na true zero? Okay, I'll give you an example. So, the example, a good example of an interval uh, variable or interval data is temperature. Okay? So, when we talk about temperature, temperature is a continuous variable. Bakit tinawag natin siyang continuous variable? It's because uh, the temperature also lies alone and evenly dispersed path. Ibig sabihin nun, 60 degrees and 50 degrees is the same as the difference between 30 degrees and 50 degrees. Now, saan papasok doon yung tinatawag natin na true zero? So, let's say ganito. Let's say, nagpakalo ako ng tubig. Okay, nagpakalo ako ng tubig and then nilagay ko siya sa isang tasa. I ask you to hold the, the cup na merong lamang hot water. And then, uh, sabihin mo sa akin kung meron bang temperature na presence nung hinawakan mo yung tasa. Of course, sasabihin mo meron. Ano yung indication mo na the variable na temperature is present dun sa tasa na meron lamang tubig? Of course, temperature naramdaman mo na mainit, so therefore, alam mo na the variable temperature is present. Okay. Now, what's the what's the measurement of a boiling water? A boiling water measures around 100 degree Celsius. So, there is your measurement. Okay. And, and, ayun yung variable natin ng temperature which is measured 100 degree Celsius. Okay. So, again, ulitin ko, alam mo na may temperature Kasi alam mo na mainit. Okay? Now, ag uh, I ask you again to hold another item and that will be a piece of ice, yellow. So, hinawa kami yung yellow. Nung hinawa kami yellow, naramdaman mo na malamig. Again, nung naramdaman mo na malamig, alam mo na pag malamig, there's a presence of temperature. Okay? Merong temperature. Uh, kasi malamig yung hawak-hawak mo na Yellow. Okay, what's the temperature of ice? The temperature of ice is 0 degree Celsius. Okay? Now, 0. 0 degree. The measurement of the temperature of the ice is 0. Pero although na 0, nandun pa rin yung variable na temperature. Kasi nararamdaman mo na malamig. Okay? So, i, uh, ang ibig sabihin nito, even though the value is 0, the, va uh, the variable is still present. Okay, yun ibig sabihin ng it doesn't have a true zero. Okay? Temperature nga, pwede pang bumaba yan sa zero. Di ba? Meron tayong negative uh, measurement ng temperature. Negative 10 degrees Celsius, negative uh, 15 degrees Celsius. So, the present of C, uh, the, the value of zero, rather, the value of zero, pag interval variable, it doesn't mean na nawala na yung temperature. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng it doesn't have a true Zero. Again, a good example of your interval variables is temperature. Now, how about ratio variables? Now, ratio variable possesses almost the same properties of interval variable. Kapareho lang siya halos ng interval variable. But the difference is, ratio variable, variable has a true zero. Okay? Interval variables, ang so pinag-usapan natin kanina, ala siyang true zero. Pero ang ratio variables, meron siyang true zero. Okay? Ano ang ibig sabihin nun? So, let's take one of the example, which is weight. Okay? Let's talk about weight. Uh, halimbawa, meron akong isang supot ng bigas. And then, pinahawakan ko sa'yo. Then, I ask you, present ba yung variable na 
weight. Yes, present yung variable na weight. Kasi nararamdaman mo, may bigat yung isang supot ng bigas. When I ask you, sa tingin mo, gano'ng kabigat yung isang supot ng bigas na yan? Okay? And you told me, sir, siguro mga around 1 kilogram. Okay, so there's your measurement. 1 kilogram weight, so you have the presence of uh, weight as a variable in that 1 kilogram of rice. Okay, now, nung tinanggal ko yung isang supot ng bigas at binigyan lang kita ng isang supot na walang lamang bigas, okay, and then I ask you, is there the presence of the variable ng weight? Okay, and sasabihin mo sa akin, uh, Sir, wala na kasi ako nararamdaman na bigat, so therefore, wala na ang variable na weight. And what's the weight of that empty uh, sack of rice? Okay, yung walang laman na supot. Sasabihin mo sa akin, uh, Sir, siguro 0 kilograms. So, si in, in a ratio variable, pag the, va the measurement is 0, it means that the variable is no longer there. Okay, kasi hindi mo na siya nakikita, hindi mo na siya nararamdaman. So, kaya tinatawag natin siyang true zero. So, ratio variable has true zero. So, wala naman sigurong measurement na negative 10 kilograms or negative 15 kilograms. So, yun yung pinagkaiba ng ratio variable and interval variable. A good example of ratio variables are height, weight, and distance. Okay, now, pag-usapan naman natin yung second type of variables, which is your discrete variable. So, a discrete variable is also known as a categor categorical or classificatory variable. This is any variable that has limited numbers of distinct values and which cannot be divided into fractions like sex, blood group, and a number of children in the family. So, uh, uh, as the name implies, pag sinabi natin discrete variables, it is categorical. So, it means that you cannot measure it, but you can count it. So, it is not measurable, but countable. So, ang ginagawa lang natin dito is we classify the variables within the group. Okay, pinagsasama-sama natin yung magkakamuka. Let's say sex ba? or gender. So, you have your male and you have your female. So, alimbawa, sa isang kwarto, na isang classroom, you want to make a, a study about the students and you want to classify them according to their sex. So, pagsasama-samahin mo yung babae at pagsasama-samahin mo yung lalaki. So, you just classify it. So, bakit natin tinawag siyang countable? Kasi hindi mo naman siya pwedeng sukatin in a sense na, na ano, na halimbawa, length, weight. Okay, you have to count ilan ang babae, ilan ang lalaki. So, ganun yung ibig sabihin ng discrete variable. Now, a discrete variable uh, may also be categorized into two. Okay, so ano yung dalawang category? So, you have your nominal variable and you have your ordinal variable. Okay, so ano yung tinatawag natin na nom nominal variable? A nominal variable, it represents categories that cannot be ordered in any particular way. So, it means that uh, you can categorize it. Pwede mo siyang i-classify, pero hindi mo siya pwede pagsunod-sunod. Okay, that is nom nominal variable. Again, a good example is uh, a sex. Okay, so male and female. So, pwede mo i-classify na male at saka female yung subject mo, pero hindi mo siya pwedeng pagsunod-sunore na ana ah, una yung male, ana ah, una yung female. You cannot do that because there is no order in that. Wala siya talaga ang order. Another, uh, some of the good example here are uh, eye color, business type, religion, political affiliation, basketball fan affiliation. So, uh, ang key point natin dito, Pag nominal variable, again, pwede mo siyang i-classify pag sasamasamahin mo yung magkakamuka, pero hindi mo siya pwedeng pagsunod-sunurin. Ganun yung nominal variable. Now, pag sinabi naman nating ordinal variable, it represents categories that can be ordered from greatest to smallest or smallest to greatest. So, again... Since it is a discrete variable, you can categorize it. Pwede mo pagsamasamahin yung magkakamuka. Okay? At hindi mo lang siya pwedeng pagsamasamahin. Pwede mo rin siyang pagsunod-sunurin in an order. Either from greatest to smallest or smallest to greatest. So, paano ba yun? Let's say, halimbawa, gumagawa ka ng study uh, tungkol sa mga students ng elementary. Okay? So, pinagsama-sama mo sila sa quadrangle and then sinabi mo, okay, lahat ng grade 1 magsama-sama, lahat ng grade 2 magsama-sama, grade 3, grade 4, grade 5, grade 6. So, nagsama-sama yung magkakamuka. So, you classified it. Classify mo siya into grades. At hindi mo lang siya classify. You can also arrange them according from greatest to smallest. O sino yung mauuna? 
Okay, o, oh, mauna sa pila yung grade 1. Mauna sa pila yung grade 2. Grade 3, grade 4, grade 5, and grade 6. Okay? So, ganun yung tinatawag natin na ordinal variable. Again, you can classify it, and also at the same time, pwede mo siyang pag-sunod, sunurin. Okay? So, that is your ordinal variable. Okay. Now, aside from classifying your variables into continuous and discrete, you can also classify your variables into independent, dependent, and extraneous variable. Okay? So, pag-usapan natin yung classification of your variables uh, into independent, dependent, and extraneous. So, let's start off with independent variable. Now, independent variables are type of variable that probably cause influence or affect outcomes. So, I think some of you are already familiar with this one. They are invariably called treatment, manipulated, antecedent, or predictor variables. So, pag sinabi natin independent variable, they are the variables that can cause influence or outcomes to the dependent variable. Okay? So, paano ba yun? So, here is an example. Let's say you are doing an exa uh, a study. Okay? You are trying to study the relationship of study habits and academic performance of Cabiao National Senior High School senior high school students. So, it means that you are, gusto mong malaman kung meron bang uh, epekto or meron bang kinalaman yung study habits ng isang estudyante sa kanyang academic performance. Okay? So, basing on that, ano sa tingin natin yung independent variable? Ang independent variable natin, of course, is the study habits. Bakit? Kasi yung study habits, uh, siya yung pwedeng maka doon sa academic performance ng isang estudyante. For example, magandang study habits, possibly maganda rin na magiging grades. Pag pangit ang study habits, of course, possibly magiging pangit din ang, uh, ang grades or academic performance. So, pag sinabi natin independent variables, again, ulitin ko, independent variables are the one that causes influence to the dependent variable. Okay? Knowing that, pag sinabi naman natin dependent variable, dependent variable are those that depend. Kaya nga dependent, ano? Depend on the independent variables. They are the outcomes or results of the influence of the independent variable. They are also known as your outcome variable. So, ang dependent variable, kagaya nga nung pangalan niya, it depends, nakadepende siya sa independent variable. Nakadepende siya doon sa value ng independent variable. As the independent variable changes, the dependent variable will also change. Okay. Balik natin example natin. Uh, study on the relationship of study habits and academic performance of Cambio National Senior High School, senior high school students. So, kanina, ang independent variable natin is the study habits. Of course, this time, the dependent variable is the academic performance or the grade. Academic performance is the dependent variable because it is depending on the study habits of the student. If the student changes their study habit, the academic performance also changes. So, it means that Yung academic performance or yung grades ng estudyante, nakadepende yun sa study habits niya. Pag nagbabago ang study habits, nagbabago din ang academic performance. So, that, that's what we mean by dependent variables. E ano naman yung extraneous variable? Extraneous variable or tinatawag natin na the third variable. Okay? Extraneous variables are variables that are not actually measured or observed in a study. Ito yung variable na hindi natin measure, but they exist and their influence can be directly detected in a study. It means that nag exist sila, nandun sila, extraneous variable, and there is a possibility, sometimes a big possibility, na maka sila sa outcome of study. So, dapat aware tayo dun sa mga extraneous variables natin. Okay? So, balikan natin yung example natin kanina. Okay, example is a study is on the relationship of study habits and academic performance of Cabio National Senior High School students. So, sabi natin that the independent variable study habits and the academic performance is uh, your dependent variable. Ano yung mga possible na extraneous variable na pwede maka doon sa outcome? Okay, pwede house tours. For example, uh, maganda nga ang study habits ng estudyante natin Yun nga lang, sometimes nakaka yung house chores niya Doon sa pag-aaral niya Kaya bumababa yung kanya academic performance Diba? Okay, nagagets niya ba? Another one is age Age can also affect academic performance in some other ways Okay? 
and even the place of residence. Okay? So, those are the possible extraneous variables. They are there, but uh, we don't consider them uh, as the independent variable, that, but they can possibly affect the dependent variable. So, that's what we mean by extraneous variables. Okay? Okay, that ends our discussion about variables. Now, let's proceed with your POS activities. Okay, so the first activity that you're going to be doing for your POS activity is uh, understanding variables. So, the direction is you try to identify the variables in each number. Write M if it's nominal, O if ordinal, R if ratio, and I if interval. Write your answer in a separate sheet of paper. So, you're going to identify kung yung bang uh, variables na given is nominal, ordinal, ratio, or interval. So, you just write N, O, R, or I. Again, you can pause this video while you're doing the activity and then we'll continue on uh, when you're done. Okay, now for the next activity, so this will be your modified true or false. Write true if the statement is correct, but if false, change the underlined words to make the statement correct. Write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. Now for this activity, so, it is true or false na medyo may twist. Okay? So, pag yung statement daw ay uh, correct, you write the word true. Now, if the statement is incorrect, palitan mo yung underlined words to make it correct. Okay? You write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. Okay? Pause this video and then when you're done, let's continue. Okay, now for the third activity, so, the direction is, define the following terms below on your own words. Write your answer in a separate sheet of paper. So, this is our generalization. So, I want you to define the three types of variables. So, independent, dependent, and extraneous. So, use your own words. Okay? Again, write your answers on a separate sheet of paper. Okay, now for the next activity... Identify the independent, dependent, and possible extraneous variable in each number. Write your answer in a separate sheet of paper. So, for this particular activity, you are given a topic okay, or a research problem. Now, you are going to be identifying the alimbang independent variable, alimbang dependent variable, and what are a possible or uh, extraneous variables. Okay, now for the next activity, I want you to classify the following variables by putting a check on the box that corresponds to your answer. Write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. Now, for this case, you are going to be classifying if the given examples is either nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio. So, maglalagay lang kayo ng check dung sa box uh, kung siya ba ay nominal, ordinal, all inter interval, or ratio. Again, write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. Okay, now for the next part, uh, identify the independent, dependent, extraneous variable in the given sets. Write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. So this is similar to your other activity. You're just going to be identifying uh, kung ano ba yung independent variable, dependent variable, and extra possible extraneous variable to the research problems given. Okay, write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. Okay, so that ends our discussion for variables in research. Okay, now, before before we end this video, so, tingnan muna natin yung ating learning activity sheet for week 4. Kasi marami nagtatanong dito kung paano ba yung gagawin. Okay, now, my first instruction for your learning activity sheet is lahat ng sagot isusulat nyo sa learning activity sheet nyo mismo. Okay, hindi na sa separate sheet of paper. Yung module, isusulat nyo siya on a separate sheet of paper, pero sa learning activity sheet, you can answer directly doon sa last nyo. Sa last. Okay? Gagamit lang kayo ng separate sheet of paper kung hindi kakasya doon sa last yung mga sagot nyo. So, tingnan natin ngayon yung mga uh, activity na nasa last for week 4. Okay. So, additional instructions, do not forget to write your name, your year, and also your section. Okay. 
So the topic for your last is, of course, kinds of variables and the learning competencies is differentiate kinds of variables and their user uses. Okay, so identifying variables, objective for this last is to identify the different kinds of variables and differentiate the kinds of variables. Okay, so lesson overview in doing a research, identifying the variables to be included in the study is a must. This can be of help to further identify the design or plan of your study. How can you determine if a variable is dependent or independent? If this In this lesson, you can understand and identify the different kinds of variables based on the given topics. So we've already talked about this. As I told you before, important na malaman nyo yung variables ng research nyo. Okay? So the materials that you're going to be using are just your paper and your pen. In this case, it's just the last and also your pen. Okay. Now, for the procedure, read and understand the different kinds of variables discussed in the given research topics. Okay, you can also analyze the given example. So, given example natin, uh, the, the title of the study is the effect of modular approach performance of grade 12 students in on the academic. Okay, so an independent variable na dito is yung modular approach at saka yung dependent variable na dito is academic performance. Yung extraneous variables are the grade, level, and age. Okay, now let's proceed with the activity itself. So, in the activity, you have to identify the independent, dependent, and extraneous variables from the following research topic titles. Write your answer in the table below. So, similar dun sa module natin. So, you're just going to be identifying alin ang independent variable, alin ang dependent variable, alin ang extraneous variable. So, sulat nyo yung sagot nyo dun sa mga boxes. Okay? Now, for your next activity, okay, analysis. So, how will you differentiate independent variable for dependent variable? So, that will be question number one. And for question number two, number two how will you describe extraneous variable? Siguro for this part, uh, you can write it on a separate sheet of paper kasi parang mali yung space niya. Then, generalization, I want you to discuss what are the three kinds of variables. Okay, so, any three kinds of variables natin? Independent, dependent, and extraneous. I want you to uh, discuss them one by one. Again, I think you should write this on a separate sheet of paper. For the application, how will you apply independent and dependent variable in your personal life? So, paano mo daw apply yung independent and dependent variable sa personal life mo? Again, write this on a separate sheet of paper kasi ala tayong space. And the last one, enrichment activity. Identify the independent, dependent, and extraneous variable in each given situation. So, we have two situations here. Uh, basahin nyo na lang and identify alin dyan yung independent, alin dyan yung dependent, at alin dyan yung extraneous variable. Okay? So, that ends our uh, module for week 4 and also our learning activity sheet for week 4. So, good luck in answering them. And every uh, I hope everybody keeps safe, especially in this time. So, I'll see you again on our next lesson.